So the fingers will also be drawn in the front view because that would define the bend angle through Z. You can get an appreciation for how large the bones are and the small area they need to fit into. So I'll just chain select this one I've drawn, delete it, and get in a little bit closer here. And because I'm going to need to sort of figure out where the edge loops are placed to get the best deformation, I'm going to turn on a feature in the front view uh, called Wireframe on Shaded. So I can actually see where my edge loops are placed. I may need to actually add in a few more edge loops to this character, but uh, I'll deal with that when we get to the enveloping stage. And I'll start by drawing a 2D chain. And I'm going to fit that knuckle line in. Again, I can kind of use the top view to help me place things. I want to start the pivot far back, almost into the palm to represent the pivot line of the knuckle, and then account for three additional pivots. So there's one right there, the first digit. There's the second digit right about there, or the second articulation point, and the third about here. And you can see what I'm saying about how large and unwieldy this is. I need to line up this chain with the finger, so I'll have to take that root and rotate it into position. And now I'll use the camera to help me line up the rest. I'll just focus in on that uh, root there. And one of the things that I'm going to have to do with the fingers is just to shrink down some of these icons a little bit. So if I press enter with the root selected, uh, I'm going to use the size attribute to make it a bit smaller and more manageable. I'll do the same thing with the effector. And the same for the bones as well. Now again, I don't want to size the bones uh, through scaling. I want to use the size attribute in the bone display property editor. So I'll size those down so it's a little bit easier to work with them. I'll turn on wireframe unshaded here as well. One of the things that's kind of interesting about the fingers is when the fingers are splayed out like they are here, although it's pretty loose, when you make a fist, the fingers line up with one another perfectly and, and the reason they do there's no seams between the, the fingers is what I'm getting at and the reason they do is because the fingers are angled slightly so that they're pointing towards the middle finger and to, to kinda get that behavior what I'm gonna need to do is take the root element I'm just gonna rotate it four or five degrees along its x-axis again remember the root is the only element of the chain that you can rotate out of the x y equals zero plane slide this over a bit more, rotate it out, and I think that'll work for me there. I just want to make sure that's in the middle of the finger. It is. Again, you can see that the pivots don't necessarily line up with an actual edge loop, so I'm going to drop a couple edge loops in here a bit later. Um, I'm going to just reuse this bone chain and duplicate it to make the middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. So I'll branch select the chain, Control D to duplicate, and I'm just going to slide that chain along its local Z axis into the next finger. That finger is going to sit up a little bit higher. Notice that we make a nice arc to define the uh, the palm. I'll rotate that chain into place. And of course, I'm going to have to rotate it down into the finger, and I'm going to want to rotate it again. So I actually have it rotated negative uh, one degrees, or let's call that zero degrees. Actually, I'll take it back to negative one, like so. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to uh, lengthen this middle finger a little bit more. The middle finger is long, the longest finger of the four. So I'll take that first digit, make it a little longer, take the second digit, make it a little longer, which gives me a pretty decent pivot for the third one. Now if the chain doesn't line up properly, you can take each bone and rotate it just on its z-axis to, to get it a better fit angle. Again, z is the axis the IK bends around, so it's the only axis that you can really manipulate and not have uh, a detrimental impact on the IK solution. I'll chain select that digit, duplicate it over. Again, it's going to need to move down a little bit because we're starting to slope down now. I'll rotate that entire chain 
into place by rotating the root on X, and kind of moving it back in Y, and lowering it. And I'm going to want to shrink the lengths of uh, the ring finger bone because the ring finger and the index finger are about the same length. Um, so I could have actually just duplicated this chain and saved myself some work, but that's okay. I'll just select this digit, work with the length attribute, hold down shift and just resize that. Do the same thing here. Sort of size that one. Make it a little bit shorter, and that final digit works okay there. We'll duplicate one more time. Control D. Let's rotate a little bit more. Rotate it into place and lower the chain. I'm definitely going to want to shrink the lengths of these bones, so I'll press enter, use the length attribute, and just shift drag backwards, and work down the chain. chain and make it a little shorter still. Which will work out pretty well. And I'm just going to do a last little bit of adjustment. And if I have to, again, just use the local z-axis to fit those bones in a little better. Okay, so we have the four digits accounted for, and for the thumb now, I'm going to add the thumb in using a different view. The thumb is sort of opposed at a, an opposing angle to allow us uh, to uh, grab objects, opposing uh, digits. I'll use the front window for that thumb because it gives me the clearest view, and I want to start the thumb deep in the palm, sort of in line with the index finger. Start it way back here at the wrist. We have a long um, ball socket joint for our first digit, followed by a hinge joint for our second and third. I'll definitely want to line that up, and we want to make sure that the z-axis, the local z-axis, lines up with the thumb itself so that the thumb can bend properly. So I'm going to just manipulate this and rotate that chain into place. I'm going to have to move this actually into the geo of the character and counter rotate so it fits nicely. I'm going to want to slide that down a little bit more. grab one of these bones and see how the z-axis looks. If you look, it kind of runs along the top of the finger. In fact, this actually could be a little better. You really want to take the time to get this right. Um, again, visually I might be experiencing a little bit of clutter with these roots and effectors, so I'll press enter and just size down some of these icons here. Don't really hurry this stage if you can help it. Spending the time to get a good fitting uh, bone is really important when you're rigging your characters.
starting to like how that works. I'm just going to do a little bit more adjustment. So if I close the fingers, the thumb will oppose properly. So that looks pretty good there. I'm going to finish this off by just drawing a palm bone. And for the palm, I typically use a two bone chain. And the reason I do that, I'll start the palm here high up in the wrist, just behind the thumb root. I'll draw one long bone to represent the palm. And I draw a small little bone here. And this bone here is actually going to become the parent of all of the roots of these finger digits and just allow me a simple means of controlling the um, closing of those four digits all at once if I have to. I'll just size down the bone attribute here and also the size of the effectors and roots. This is going to need to be placed properly. I'll just slide it into the hand and rotate that chain back into place. Make sure it's flush with the palm. And that pivot point should work pretty well. So that takes care of all the bones in the hand now.